So welcome to the show and it is Monday and this is going out live on Mintwave radio station so you can just ask Alexa or you can go to camrobertscoaching.com forward slash Mintwave hyphen radio to listen in live and you can see our schedule of all the other shows. Now it's also going out as a podcast too so find us on camrobertscoaching.com forward slash podcast hyphen network for this particular podcast and to see other podcasts in the network. Now you can download the app for Apple and or Android and please subscribe and follow or leave a comment. Now today's episode is 109 and today we have Janet Sandberg who is an intuitive coach, divine channel, energy master, medium and author. And we're going to be talking about how to trust align and connect with your soul so that you can stop feeling broken. Now, I'm Karen Roberts. I'm your host. Now, we provide a platform for coaches, consultants, therapists, and healers to get their message heard to the people who need it. Uh, We own Mintwave Radio Station and Raising Vibrations Podcast Network. And we also have a directory. So come and find the right coach or therapist or healer that is the right fit for you. So Janet is the former gothic punk girl with a dragon tattoo who is now a Doc Martin wearing spiritual badass. Love that. She's a channeler, energy master, author and medium. She loves helping women who are feeling lost, lonely, disconnected and broken. And she helps them learn to trust and align, connect and heal so that they can fall in love with their souls and their lives. So welcome to the show, Janet. (laughs) It's lovely to have you you here. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So if you could share with the audience a little bit about, yeah, where where do we start with all of that? If you could start with by sharing your story. It's a long story. (laughs) (laughs) We've only got an hour. (laughs) Um, well, we'll start with uh, the spirituality side. Um, so that has been around ever since I was a little girl. Um, I didn't know what it was until I was in my 30s, um, mostly just because of the era I was born in and there was no internet and it was really hard to find information on energy healing and mediumship and all of these things. Um, I eventually discovered Reiki when I was in my 30s. I was actually at a massage school. And once that world opened up and I was all the other pieces made sense. I was like, oh my gosh, this is why I've experienced the world so differently my whole life. Like I've never felt like I really fit in. And then the mediumship piece came back and made sense. And I was like, oh, that's what that was when I was little. Now I understand what that was. And I still had to sort of learn how to work it and how to um, really sort of take advantage of that aspect. But like anything, it's a practice. And the more you do, the better you get. Um, and yeah, now I'm just open to everything and it's amazing. So I can, so I like to say I can channel on three levels. So spirit, source, the universe, whatever you want to call that, your soul and people who have passed over. They're, they're all on different frequencies for me. So it's like three different radio stations. Oh, wow. Interesting. So what was your, I mean, how, what happened? What was the first time where you thought, Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I am. I mean, uh, how does it work, right? I'm, you know, this this is not me. I'm not tuned in. Or would you, you, you might say, we've been conditioned throughout schooling not to listen or not to take notice and, and sort of dismiss it. So for you, at what age were you when you thought, hmm. <laughs> you say that you always felt a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, but what was the first, I suppose, encounter or And can you describe it for us? Um, So as young as like three or four. um, Wow. I know like if I was in a very 
quiet sort of zen-like place. Usually it happened when I was coloring. I used to love to color in coloring books. So, you know, you'd be sitting there, coloring is very meditative, you're very focused. Mm. And I, you know, if nobody else was around, then I would, it would feel like somebody puts their hands on the side of my head and forces it, my, my head to turn and look in a certain direction. And I'd be like, oh, like I couldn't resist that feeling of like, I have to look over there. And then I would look over there and of course there's nothing there. And I'd go back to coloring and it would happen again and again until they gave up. And um, because I just wasn't getting the message because I didn't know mm. what to do as a little girl when I looked over there. Um, and then once I started to understand energy a little bit more and those feelings, I shut those feelings off you know, for a long, long time. And once, once they came back, I was like, oh, I, so now I'm, oh. I know I'm supposed to look over there. What if I start asking questions? What if I try to feel something when I look over there? You know, like I just started tr experimenting with different things. I was like, this must mean something. Hmm. So. And it's interesting you saying that you first noticed it when you were coloring so like you said you're focused on coloring which means you're not really thinking mm -hmm. so I suppose you're in a slightly meditative state not you know you've not got all these chitter chatter in your head you're focused on coloring and that's when it comes in do you think I mean what are your thoughts on do you think everybody has the ability to channel we just don't know how to do it and then do you think that because we've got, we're surrounded by so many distractions. And even, you know, even before the internet, you've got TV and th there's just too many things to keep us distracted and to keep us thinking all ego mind stuff. And that we've sort of come away from having these quiet times, focused times on something when we we could actually listen to these intuitive callings. Do you think that's part of the problem? I do. Yeah. And I know early on, especially with the, the mediumship, um, because I wasn't really in control of that with energy healing and other things, that was me putting myself in the space and being like, mm -hmm. I'm ready to do this now. The mediumship would sort of come to me. <laughs> you didn't have a choice. <laughs> I didn't really have a choice. But because, yeah, it always came in those moments of quiet, even as an adult, like at the at the beginning before I knew what I was doing. Mm. Um, yeah. And I think without purposely putting ourselves in those moments, and that's why things like journaling are so good because we shut everything off and it's just us and spirit, you know, or, mm. or whatever, our soul. Um, it's just those quiet times where we shut off all the distractions and meditation, same thing, you know, it's journaling is a different way of meditating, but. Yeah. Do you think it's, this is why there's seems to be a real explosion uh, of people out there that have sort of found their purpose and, and, and really sort of do all of this work again, do you think that's the sort of, I don't know, in recent years, there seems to be a reintrodu reintroduction of mindfulness, meditation, different retreats. So do you think people um, who are, you know, who are interested are increasing or, or, or working on their skill sets with this because of that reintroduction and they're not being so distracted? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, well, it's, it's, it's sort of a chicken and egg thing too, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's so many more distractions in the world. We need to seek out those oh. things so much more than we used to. Um, mm. But also then the more there are, the more we notice them and the more we want to do them. Yeah, I suppose so. so. Well, I think it's a good thing that more and more people are getting into meditation, are being more practicing mindfulness. And like you said, it's it's the practicing um, like anything, I suppose it's a it's a skill set, isn't it? I mean, it is, you, you've yeah. just said that some of the things you didn't have a choice with, they just come in. And then other things, just like anything, I suppose it's like a, an intuitive muscle that you've got to train. 
and um, so that that's how you've got to where you are now. So you mentioned three sort of different frequencies. So can we sort of go through that a little bit? You mentioned soul, you mentioned, yeah, connecting to universe, whatever. But can you, to the listeners, sort of explain the difference between the three different frequencies? Sure. So um, the universe, source, spirit, whatever you want to call it, I usually refer to it as spirit or the universe. Um, that's the highest frequency. And, you know, if you've heard anything about the law of attraction or manifesting or anything, we know that our own vibration has to be high so that we can be in alignment with the universe. Um, so it's the same thing when I'm receiving messages. Um, it's more of a sensory thing. Like I can tell that the message coming in is at a higher frequency. Um, so I know, um, and I open myself up to a higher frequency to receive messages from spirit. Soul is mm -hmm. kind of a, it's not necessarily a more medium frequency, but you know, for the for these purposes, we'll call yeah, it that. to explain it um, <laughs> so that we can understand. Be, right. But also because I do energy healing, um, that's the one I most practiced at because that's what I tune into when I'm working with your energy. If I'm doing Reiki or something like that, then I'm tuned into your personal energy. Um, mm -hmm. And then so if I'm channeling that a message from your soul then it's on that personal frequency. Ah, and then so how would you describe how would you describe a soul then? Because so that's that's your inner, but is that not connected to, to, to spirit? So it's just your inner personal energy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which yes, hopefully is connected to the oh, universe and to you source. Have to hope so. <laughs> and the third one? The third one is the mediumship, the, the people who have passed on. Um, and that's a much lower frequency. Um, just, oh, okay. Just because of, you know, their situation. <laughs> All right. Ah, oh, interesting. Now, I wasn't expecting that, actually. So with what you do, can you share with the audience a little bit about, um, you know, you know, I read out your sort of bio and yet you're helping people who are feeling a little bit broken and you're helping them to align. But yeah, explain a little bit more about, you know, how you help them and uh, what sort of transformations are you getting? Sure. So um, well, I'll start with my, with my story and why I do what I do. So for the past 15 years, I kind of went through a lot of stuff, back-to-back -back traumas. Um, I was in an emotionally abusive marriage. Um, we separated to different countries. I, my kids were, I don't know, like 11 and 13 at the time. And then I was a single mom. I didn't have any, you know, family or support um, while I was raising them. Um, not local anyways. Mm -hmm. um, you went through a really terrible international divorce that is actually parts of it are still ongoing. Um, in the meantime, my sister got cancer twice oh. and then she passed away when she was, she was 44. Um, oh. I was 41. Um, my dad had cancer twice, two different kinds. Um, he had prostate cancer and colon cancer at the same time that my sister had cancer. Um, and then he's fine now. He's, he's doing really well. Um, Good. But then uh, right after my sister passed, then uh, my mother developed dementia. And then we had to live through and care for her for five years before she passed. Um, all, all this time, I'm trying to start a business. I'm trying to heal from everything. Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, the pandemic hit my then- partner, now husband, lived across the border. So I'm an hour, I'm in Canada, I'm in Ontario, I'm an hour from the US border. He's an hour on the other side of the US border. <sighs> so there's only two hours driving between us, but the border was closed because of the pandemic. Uh, so we couldn't see each other. Oh. So for eight months, we didn't see each other at all. 
Oh. And then um, slowly they were allowing visits. Um, we eventually decided to get married to make the border crossing thing easier because they were allowing different rules for families than for other people. So we got married in the height of lockdown. We almost didn't get a marriage certificate because a uh, marriage license because um, they were like, it's lockdown. Nobody's getting married. Um, and we're like, we're, we're getting married in a park and it's just, you know, us and the officiants and my kids and that's it. Wow. We're like, oh, okay. So we begged them. So anyway, so we went through all of that and, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's been a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a journey. Yeah. You've certainly been through it. And, and, and I suppose this is it. We've, you know, it's, uh, when you've got young kids, you know, you're getting over dealing with baby and toddlers and nobody really prepares you for what could happen later on when you are caring for elderly parents. And there's so much in life that we're not really prepared for. Yeah. And then for you, it's all happened together. Your mm -hmm. sister, your I mean, that it is a lot to get. Each one needs a healing process. Each one needs time to grieve. And so you sort of, Sounds like you sort of had it all in one hit. I did. A very long hit. <laughs> but, mm, but a very I, long hit. And I came out of that and I'm just, or at some point during during all of that, I was like, I, I, where am I? You know, I don't know who I am anymore. And that was a big part of it. So healing from the emotional abuse was was a big part of my healing journey. But then also just trying to figure out who I was after, you know, your kids get older and they don't need you quite as much anymore. Like, who am I? When you lose a sibling, you have to reorganize the family structure in your head. You know, I'm an only child now. Um, mm. And then you lose a parent and all of these things, you have to mm. sort of reassess who you are. And it is so easy to get lost and get disconnected from your soul, from who you really are. Um, and I went through it so many times. Uh, I'm pretty good at finding it again now. <laughs> was, you're an expert. I'm a bit you're of an expert. Um, and so I wanted to use my gifts to help other people who, whether they've been through trauma or terrible life experiences, or they're just super busy with life and they kind of forget who they are you know, help them find themselves again, because that is really where life gets good is when, right. you know, you know who you are on a soul level when your soul is connected to the universe as it should be. Um, should and you be. can, you know, go through life and, and with ease and flow and love and abundance and, and feel better. It, so, cause it, yeah. Cause it's not meant to be the struggle that, many people sort of find themselves in so how how do people learn how to trust align connect with their soul and what happens when they do <laughs> so i work on sort of a body mind soul everything um principle i guess um <laughs> so because my background is in energy healing, I work a lot of that. And I think it's really, really important before we even start or at the same time as bringing in mindset hacks and new thoughts and beliefs and practices, if there's nowhere for those to go, then what are we even doing? So the energy healing part clears out all of that emotional baggage and the gunk that we carry around with us from all of those past experiences. So we create some space with that so that when we introduce all of these new ways of being, they can integrate much more quickly. And then mm. at the same time, I'm also channeling messages for you to help you make that connection. So that I'm sort of acting as a translator between you and your soul and you and the universe. So I will pass on messages that your soul is telling you what your soul wants, what your soul 
craves and desires. And then you do those things or you, you know, follow the instructions. And then you recognize that feeling. Like when you are doing what your soul is telling you to do, you just feel good. It's, it's a whole, it's, it's a different kind of joy than when you're doing something that you humanly enjoy. Um, and then over time, you begin to recognize that. You begin to understand for yourself what your soul wants and how to get that feeling, those connections. And you build that up yourself. So eventually my clients don't need me anymore. I mean, that's a good thing, isn't it? Yes. That's a good thing. You've done your work. You've done your work. You, they've got the transformation and now they know. Because again, it's it does feel like because we just have been con so conditioned to do things in a certain way and it is all about, you know, it's almost like we've been conditioned not to trust our gut, not to trust, um, not to even, you know, in school be told off for daydream. I might, I might be in a meditative state. It's a good place to be. But everything was sort of being knocked out of us as as we've got older. And so it's almost, it sounds like it's, we've got to relearn that stuff that we probably intuitively did as children. Absolutely. And we've been told off. <laughs> yeah. For, well, for doing it. Do we, you know, even just the, listen to your mother, you know, like, don't, don't do what you feel is good. You know, listen to your mm. mother, listen to your parents, do what makes them happy. And so we just stop, especially as kids, we don't want to get in trouble. So you stop listening to yourself. Um, mm. And then it's listen to the teachers and, you know, listen to your boss and listen to your friends and your family. And there's just, there's so much noise mm. coming at us all the time from these people who are supposed to love us and care about us and want the best for us. And we stop listening to ourselves. Mm. And how long does it, I mean, you know, for some people that, you know, it, it's because it's not finite, right? It's not tangible, it's feeling. And so some people, I don't, I don't think they really know whether, oh, should I trust that feeling or not? How, what, how, what is the difference? How do people sort of navigate this journey? It's a lot of trial and error at the beginning, um, which is where my translating comes in. If you're trying to do it by yourself, it's a much longer, more challenging process of just learning to trust. And it's just through doing like little tests and little experiments until you start to recognize the, the messages and the the voices in your head, <laughs> which ones to listen to, you know, which yeah, ones, which are ones and which, yeah. and which ones are our ego. Right? Yes. Yes. That's, that seems to be the, the hardest thing. And it's, because I, I, what I have found is I realized I was getting the whole thing wrong for about 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> I've come to that conclusion. Oh, or well, I'm not going to blame that, but I'm going to blame my my personal interpretation of what I was listening to or reading to, reading on. Because, you know, the self-development arena is all about thoughts. Mm -hmm. Thoughts become things, you know. what How you think affects how you feel. But it seems backwards you know the thoughts are mine how do you know if they're the right thing like you say they could be just the ego it's just your subconscious saying oh, no 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 don't go there because you've not been there before versus yeah it's that feeling place mm -hmm. and, well, and that's the trusting the tricky part is that ego you know wants to keep us safe so that voice always sounds like it's a good idea because why would our soul tell us to do something that's scary or out of the ordinary or um, something that sounds like we don't want to do that when really that's the direction we need to go in because we need to get out of this stuck space that we're in. But that's a little bit scary. So we, mm. we listen to the safe voice. Um, mm. So it's taking those baby steps and being like, but what if I just step a little bit outside of my comfort zone. What happens? And then your soul does a little happy dance. And <laughs> you're like, oh, Yay. okay. But we still have to always sort of overcome that 
that ego voice that's trying to keep us safe and small and stuck. Yeah, that seems to be the 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 point is that which one to listen to. So is your advice doing baby step rather than, you know, some people want to go for that big goal from where they are. And of course, their ego is going, no chance, mate. <laughs> Who Everybody do you think you different. are? <laughs> Everybody's a little different. For me, mostly it's baby steps that that works for mm. me but some people are 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 jumpers you know well it, well, it like, makes no, sense to just make sense to soften that negative voice negative chitter chatter first and then as you go and as you become a little bit more intuitive and trusting it then you can go for go for the big jumps <laughs> so what is your whole thing now so you know hopefully we're fully out of lockdown and all of that drama uh, you're married, so it doesn't matter if it happens again. Hopefully it will never happen again in our lifetime. Um, so what is it that you're specifically doing? You're specifically helping women, but who in particular? Do you have any particular um, person that you you really love working with? Um, yeah, basically women like me. So you've, you're in sort of sort of middle age, you know, 35 to 55, because that's sort of that, that sandwich generation, right? Where we've got the kids at home, but we've got pa parents who are getting older and we're being torn in all these directions. The kids are getting older, they're in all sorts of activities. And, you know, we just lose ourselves so much um, just because of life and what is going on. And then if you add in something like a divorce or a loss or something on top of that, um, then it's just, that's usually the trigger where we kind of look around and because we're pulled out of our usual busyness and our usual um, ways of, of doing things and living our lives. And then we're like, wow, like what happened to me? Who am I? Um, I need to find myself again. I need to, to connect with my soul again. And some people never realized they were connected to their soul in the first place. And this is a whole brand new thing, um, you know, where they're just like, something is missing. You know, I feel lost. I feel like I don't fit into the world anymore. Um, I feel kind of broken. Um, and which no I don't one ever is, like where no I am. One. Yeah. No one's ever broken. It's, it's amazing what, uh, that, what the things that we go through and, um, it, yeah, it's just, it, like you say, it's difficult to sort of navigate it by yourself because so many feel like it's only them. Mm -hmm. They're the only ones that are going through it. And I suppose because of social media, you look around, everybody's life looks perfect. And so then they might be thinking, oh, why is it me? It's only me. But they're not. <laughs> so many people go through this. It's all part mm -hmm. of the journey, isn't it? It is. It is part of. And you know, I don't think these things happen to us, you know, to test us or anything. It's just part of being human. You know, we, mm. we just have human experiences, um, but it's, it's how we come out of them. But even like you said, um, people don't tell us the, the challenging parts of parenthood. Um, and people don't tell us the challenging parts of life. Like, you know, when you're a kid, your parents might go to a funeral or something, but certainly in our generation or my generation. So I'm 50. So my parents are in their eighties. So, you know, they didn't share feelings or emotions or talk about what was going on in their lives or with their friends or, so we had no idea um, that, that these sorts of things. And then you, you come across, you get to that age that you remember mm. your parents being at when all of those things were happening. And you're like, um, why am oh. I being blindsided by all of this? Yeah. Well, no um, one wants to talk about it, do they? Right. But I suppose, you know, at the end of the day, it's all part of life's journey. It like, no, you know, no one's getting out of this alive. Either. <laughs> <laughs> no one, not one person on the planet is getting away with it. So it is all part of the journey. And I suppose with your mediumship, that must really, you know, because 
I know what it's like. I lost my father, well, coming up two years now. Um, and, yeah, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I wasn't set up for it. And I would think that that's going to be a lot big comfort f- to help people transition through that process. And, again, even that, you know, it's, it's funny. I would sort of think to myself, look, you know, he was 85. That's, that's actually I'm privileged to be dealing with this now because, you know, it could have happened a long time ago. So I should be almost, you know, it, it's such a mixed load of emotions because we know it's it's going to happen at some mm-hmm. time. It's still horrendous to go through it. But like I say, none of us are getting out of this alive. And if they have gone through and had a wonderful life and got to that age, that, that's that's a good thing. You know, we can, we can all only hope to 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 get there you know so it's 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 a real mixed bag of emotions going through it so what you're doing with with channeling yeah people who have passed over i bet that's a a huge relief and just calming for people who are struggling with a loss it's interesting so the first time i i channeled did a mediumship reading for somebody who wanted to connect with a specific person it was for a friend of mine and her dad had passed and she wanted to just check in and make sure he was okay. So I'm like, I don't even know if I can do that. I've never done that before. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, if you're okay with just kind of experimenting, then let's give it a go. So we did. And it was such a beautiful experience. It was so healing for her. And, you know, he, he was happy to to have somebody to connect him to her as well. But she was able to ask questions that she still had that lingered. And she was able to just understand that he was in a good place and he wasn't suffering anymore. And, you know, all of those things. Mm. And I was like, wow, this is a great, beautiful gift that I have. Um, I want to do more of this. But then I started encountering that the majority of the people were not like my friend. They were not looking for sort of closure to be able to move on. They were clinging to the past. Oh. So they were using these mediumship readings as a way to not let go. They oh. were in such a desperate place that they needed to have these, you know, some of these people were doing like daily or weekly readings with their loved one who had passed because they just couldn't let go. And I'm like, I am a healer first and foremost. Mm. I'm a coach. This goes against everything that I do. Um, You know, I'm here to help people align, to help people let go to get rid of all of that baggage so that they can move on and be happy and enjoy their lives. And I was um, keep helping them stay stuck. Yeah. And, okay. That makes sense. And I couldn't mm. do that anymore. So I am very careful now with who I do readings for and how I do them. Um, so a lot of times, um, so in my Facebook group, we do regular readings, but I will just like whoever comes through is how it happens. So f- as opposed to me seeking out a very specific, a specific. person mm, to talk okay. to, that is where things get tricky and dangerous. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I can of, see that. Yeah. But do you have a choice? <laughs> so you I don't do. have a choice. Yeah. Who, oh, you do have a choice. Who I comes do. through? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I set the intention. I'm like, I am here to to help people. If you have a a loving message you would like to pass on to somebody who's here in the group, then by all means, let me know. Uh-huh. Um, as opposed to I'm looking for John Smith, uh-huh. you know, because your daughter is here and she wants to feel better about herself. <laughs> mm. um, and are, do people, I mean, not... Can can you get anybody or will it only be, it's only, you know, it's only going to be certain spirits that are going to come through? How I mean, how does it all work? It's all sort of alien to me. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, I don't know. I've had, I've had all kinds of, of weird things happen, as you can imagine. Um, and you know, one time I was, I was trying to find somebody's mother to, to channel for her. And she's like, I've, I've asked several different mediums and nobody can ever connect to her. And I thought I had, but then she was like saying all these things that didn't make sense. And we're like, no, this is somebody else just like pretending to, <laughs> to be this lady I was looking for. Um, Comedy ones. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Comedians. Like, this, is, this is not what I signed up for. Um, and then sometimes, you know, if I just sort of open the floor, um, there's just general, sometimes it's angels, sometimes it's spirit um, guides. Um, you know, sometimes there's just other random people that <laughs> come through and, and have a message. It's not necessarily anybody that um, is known personally. Right. So Wow. Yeah. Living in t different, different realms you are by the sounds of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But with your with your program, your specific program that you help people with, what's how, what is the process with that? If somebody's feeling a little bit lost and and you know, I mean, I'm 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 going to be fifty one soon, and I am probably possibly about to be an empty nester. Um, I've only got one daughter with me now. I've already got an older daughter that's living in central London. And the other one's talking about moving in with her boyfriend. Here we go. So um, <laughs> thankfully, I do have something to, to to focus on. But I get it that, you know, many women, especially maybe if they've also on their own. I mean, I'm a single mum. Mm -hmm. um, if I didn't have what I was doing, I, I can imagine it could be quite a scary time once, the you know, the last child flies the nest. Yeah, that's another one of those <laughs> regular life things that nobody talks about. No. The whole empty nest process that I went through a couple of years ago it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought I, it I thought I'd be fine with it. And then mm. <laughs> um mm. no I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Like selfish. Exactly. Yeah. I'm you know and I, I'm very aware of that. I know it's me and my selfishness. Oh, I don't, I don't want, I, no, I want you here. <laughs> yeah. But it's but that's another journey. big life transition that we go through where yeah. we're like, and it's hard for, for us, you know, like we're not needed anymore. We've done our job yeah. so well that they don't need us anymore. You know, that's, yeah, that's the, the weird <laughs> sort of. Again, it's a mix, isn't it? All these things yeah. are really sort of. You know, it, it, that's what we're there to do at the end of the day. We're there to prepare them for life and off your trot sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we're going to have these other feelings of, oh, no, I'm not ready to let, let go. So for, for those women out there who might be going through that process and uh, want to, you know, need help navigate it, because, again, you know, I don't know why, especially as women, we we feel that we've got to do everything on our own. otherwise. It means we failed. No, no, <laughs> absolute rubbish. Um, always, always easier to get help, get it dealt with faster. Mm -hmm. So, for, first of all, how would they get in touch with you? So, anybody who's just listening and can't see all your links that are down below, how would they? How would they get in touch? Um, my website, which is just janetsandberg.com, S-A-N-D-B-E-R-G is how you spell Sandberg. Um, I am on Instagram at janetsandberg.intuitive. I'm on Facebook, um, either my personal profile, which is just my name, or my page, which is also Janet Sandberg Intuitive. Um, yeah, or my awesome. email, which is janet at janetsandberg.com. So nice and simple. It's the name. Remember the name. Right. Remember my the last, name. My last business was called Blue Dragonfly Energy Wellness Center. Ooh, and a mouthful. it was such a mouthful. And I spelled center with the R-E at the end the proper way. And that messed so many people up. Ah. <laughs> so this time I'm like, I'm just using my name. <laughs> Keep it simple. Keep it we simple. are well, we over I'm I'm got a terrible habit of uh overcomplicating things I have to then re I have to backtrack and simplify 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 because I know I'm doing it I know I do it so 
yeah how so how do they work with you so what's your process with it so so we work together and like i said it's a combination of healing channeling and coaching um and we just go through all all the steps so that first bit we're we're learning to trust ourselves we're learning to listen to our souls we're we're learning that trust um and then we once once we're we're good with with ourselves and our souls then we reach out a little bit so that's the alignment where we learn to connect to the universe to to source to spirit where we can use that external source as a uh, guiding light, I guess, mm -hmm. um, to help us know which direction to move in that's going to be the best for us. Um, and then we learn, yeah, how to connect those things, how to connect our soul to the universe, to, to be guided um, and um, to, to move forward with ease and flow to create that life of success and abundance and love and fulfillment and everything which else what, that makes life great. Which is what we're all here to do. It's that just is that our we natural get state. Yeah. So we really need to just get back to our default setting. Exactly. That's what we need. I, I, you know, I say this quite often, I'll just, I want them to create something like in the matrix to just download. Can you just get rid of that baggage and upload a new lot? And, and yeah, like you say, that is our, that is our birthright. It's just that we through experiences and the not knowing we don't, none of us, we don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And we self-sabotage not because, you know, we're bad people or we're, it's just because we're unaware of, you know, the way things are. And I suppose so it is, it's about understanding how, you know, the, the universal laws work and mm. uh, why uh, use them to your advantage, right? Absolutely. Work with them, not against them. Yeah. But yeah, it takes time, doesn't it? Nothing's going to happen overnight. Or do mm. you, have you had any sort of spontaneous uh transformations uh sadly no <laughs> <laughs> i don't think there's gonna be I'm, I'm i'm gonna keep keep asking and see if anybody's had any um because it is it's it's all gonna be a journey isn't it like mm -hmm. you know i come from the fitness world so you know yeah, none of that happens overnight. Away. ah don't, not does it it does not does it yeah. <laughs> which is a little bit of a pain but well, it takes us so long in life to get to this point where we're looking for help, where we're realizing, you know, it's going to also take time to to get back to yeah, a point sure. of, of health and balance and, and feeling good. Absolutely. And we've got so much, pro. like we say, you know, there's programming that's gone on for depending on how old you are. It's been going on a few decades now. Yes. So to sort of unlearn that is going to take time and we will always default back to our habitual modes of being, which may not necessarily be healthy just because they're habitual. Because mm -hmm. that seems to be the trouble is, is when we are, you know, I suppose we do go about our days most of the time unconsciously. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like what you're teaching is to actually bring them conscious yes. and aware and listening out so that they hear it. Because again, like I say, we've got distraction. Oh my goodness. Your mm -hmm. notifications from this ping, ping, ping. There's just too much. And even more so in this day and age with all the different social media platforms it's just too much to to deal with and they're all just dis distracting us from connecting us with our soul universe whatever it is that we really need because mm -hmm. that's that that's who knows doesn't it knows better than the internet it's more your soul is more powerful than the internet <laughs> more powerful than tiktok i mean no go figure <laughs> <laughs> Really? I mean, yeah, that's that seems to be the thing. I mean, I, I, it seems to be a two-way thing. They're, some people are going more that way and some people are, well, hang on, <laughs> we need to go. We need to go this way. And um, 
it, it just feels like it's it doesn't have to be that uphill struggle when you're connected to when you're trying to do it by yourself under stress, which means mm-hmm. it's never going to work. Right. <laughs> so you've been doing this Ooh. now uh, for a while. Well, all your life, really, since you're three. Yeah. Uh, and naturally, you've been learning the skill sets. So where do you see you going in the future? What's your goals? My goal is very humble. I want to change the world. Ah. <laughs> um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to reach the whole world. But every person that I can help has a ripple effect on the people in their lives and the people that they surround. So for everybody that starts living a soul-led life, they start, people see the difference. They feel the difference. They're like, what, what have you been doing? What happened to you? <laughs> like, why are you happy? Why is life suddenly going your way suddenly for other people? Mm. Um, right. They, they mm. see that you're doing life in a way that they want to. Sometimes that makes other people mad because <laughs> they get jealous and they're like, mm, what are you doing? You know, you're not the same mm-hmm. as you used to be. And then there's, that's a whole thing. But there is a ripple effect, which is always positive. Either you're getting rid of the people who are not serving you or, and you're influencing those around you in a positive way. So, mm-hmm. you know, if you've got kids, you get to start teaching your kids these things, even if they're older. Um, you know, by the time I kind of came out of all of my stuff and my fog, my kids were like in their late teens, but it's not too late. It, and so much of what I've learned really helped them because, you know, bigger kids, bigger problems, right? They're, they're dealing with more life issues. Um, and if you can pass that on to your kids because of the, the wisdom and the trust and the alignment that you have. You trust in your parenting that much more. You trust in your relationships with your family and with your friends. And it just, it ripples out. So whether I'm directly affecting people, and hopefully I would like to work with lots of people because that's what I love to do, but then have them go out in the world and um, have a positive effect on the people in their lives. Well, yeah, you're right. It's going to have a knock-on effect to anybody that's around them isn't it? So it, it, it's, it's all a positive because there's way too much. We've got enough negativity going on, yes. right? <laughs> there's enough going on. But the key is, is that just as much as the negative, there's still, you know, it's the yin and yang, but it's just that we don't hear about it so much because, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, not that I watch the news because I don't even have a TV. I got rid of that in lockdown. I've been two years without one. It was the best thing I ever did. No terrestrial telly, which means no adverts, no, no news. I can't hear it even if I if even if I wanted to. And what I have found is that even though I would have said I don't watch the news anyway, you're gonna catch it at some point if a program's change, you know, you're going to, and it's all going in, isn't it? It's all, Mm -hmm. it's all subconscious, it's all going in. And the difference I feel for the last two years, massive, because I just, you know, some things you can't avoid. You can go on Facebook, you you find out any major thing. took me a while to find out some of the big things that had gone on in England (laughs) this last year. Uh, I was a bit late to the table, but... You know, did I really need to, you know, was yeah. it affecting my life? Do, do I really need to know? There's not enough of the positive out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and we know it's going on. <laughs> it's not just the negative. Right. So, yeah, as, as, as much as you can uh, transform one person, you don't know how many others, and that's going to that, that's gonna help around it. So that's brilliant. Love what you do. Love Thank what you, you do. I mean, but it, again, it, it does take practice. Like I, yeah, I spend, I don't know how many hours I spend. I spend more time meditating, I suppose, because I'm not watching telly. <laughs> I spend more time <laughs> meditating, not majorly long. I have a 15-minute meditation I do morning and evening. And, uh, you know, I try to sort of reconnect throughout the day because, again, you get distracted mm-hmm. and 
fall into work. So yeah. it's it's all a process, isn't it? But yeah. one day I'd like to take it a stage further because it's just the not knowing how to really and yeah, and maybe I'm not hundred percent trusting everything <laughs> that's coming in. So it's a learning process, is it, Janet? There's hope for everybody. Everybody can oh, do I this. Think so. Yeah. Yeah. As human beings, that's that's you know, that's probably what we're here to do, isn't it? Part of it, to remember. Yes, I think so. <laughs> to remember. So yeah, well, like you did mention now one thing we haven't talked about. I'm sure you mentioned author. Author, yes. We haven't touched on that, so please explain. Um, so uh, my pandemic project, <laughs> when the world shut down, I was like, hmm, what now? <laughs> I said, I know. I'll... And then I just had this amazing divine download and uh, put out a journal. So because one of the things that I do with my clients is I channel messages so I had a bunch of those that were written down, just lying, lying around. Um, so I said, those channeled messages can help more than just the person that they were channeled for, obviously. So it's a, a 30 day journal, give or take. There are 30 messages. So the messages are a prompt. And then there's an illustration that you can color because as we know, that's how I ah. tuned in was through coloring. So there's um, a hand-drawn uh, illustration for every prompt um, that a dear friend of mine drew for me. Um, and then there's room to journal. So you read the prompt, color the picture, and then feel into what's coming up for you and write, write it out. Um, and it just, it helps you explore your soul mm. um, in a, in a different way. It just gets you thinking about different things and, and interpreting your, your soul and your feelings in different ways. Um, so you can either go through like do one every day for 30 days, or you can just, whenever you, the feeling hits, you can just open it up like a deck of oracle cards and see whichever message is meant for me today ah. um, and do it that way. But yeah, I've had tons oh. of great feedback. Everybody who's bought one has loved it. So Love that. Yeah. So again, it's that going through that process of calming, mm -hmm. unthinking, focus mm -hmm. on, the, on the coloring in. And then would you ask a question? Is it, 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 should you ask what your, you know, what, what do you need that day or what do you, I don't know. I don't know. How, how would it, does it, it work? Or you're just it's, waiting. It's for worked for everybody. You know, some people are like, what do I need today? And then they'll just open to a random page, random, right? <laughs> a guided page. <laughs> um, yeah. Or they, they work through like just from beginning to end. And, cool. and in that sense, it's also, this is what I needed to hear today. Yeah. Um, so yeah. great. And so to the listeners, how would they get hold of that? Um, the easiest way is on Amazon. Um, and it the journal is called Spirit Would Like You to Know. Ah. Uh, that's Spirit how all of like the messages start. So <laughs> ah, okay, okay, yeah. perfect. Right. So yeah, if you're out there, you would like to get that journal, then go to Amazon. Nice and simple. Mm -hmm. So, well. Thank you so much for your time today, Janet. It's been lovely speaking to you. Um, it's definitely woo-woo. So as <laughs> wasn't just a sprinkling of woo-woo there. We <laughs> no, had a, little, a lot of it today. Uh, love, I love it. I mean, I just, I just think it's just something, you know, I don't even like the word woo-woo because it's, it, it is what it is. But again, because of our conditioning, we have most people, most people have been brought up to believe it. That's all woo woo. So I suppose the whole idea of this whole show was really to sort of drip feed them a little bit, see if it resonates and then just sort of move them along. Yeah. And these days, yeah, um, <laughs> the more woo woo, the better. Love it. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
So, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Anybody want you know where to get in contact? It's very simple. It's our name.com, janetsandberg.com. And anybody that is out there, if you are a coach, a healer, a therapist, and you are ready to scale your business and you need help with designing, creating, marketing, selling your program, we also have a fully automated system that will take a lot of the heavy lifting out of it. Just quickest way is book a call. You can go to the website or book a call, karenrobertscoaching.com forward slash discovery, uh, just for a quick informal chat with either myself or one of my team. And I will be back tomorrow with a coffee with Karen. So bye for now. Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs from a mental, physical and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo.